Did you know that snake plant is actually a kind of dracaena growing in the highlands of Kenya, Zimbabwe and also in some parts of Asia. What is interesting about this plant is that the locals use it to treat earache, snake bites and even ulcers. Now supposedly it's an easy to care plant but despite that I have often managed to mess up with it. Sometimes it just dries, sometimes the cuttings start to rot and sometimes it just takes forever to grow. So today I am going to try and share whatever I have learned about caring for this plant. So first let's talk about the growth of snake plant. How can one improve its growth? After much experimentation I have realized that the snake plant does best in small pots. So this means you don't have to repot this plant very quickly. Now of course adding a fertilizer also helps but since this plant has evolved to sustain in conditions where there's not a lot of nutrients in the soil it can still do well without fertilizer. The main thing is that you concentrate on the size of the pot. If you're using a big pot with just a couple of leaves these leaves will take a very long time to establish themselves in this soil and it will take a lot of time for you to see new growth coming out. Now the second most important factor is watering. Since this is a succulent, meaning a plant that stores water in its leaves, if you keep watering it too much, when I say too much, I mean if you water it probably every 2-3 to three days also, then it's too much of water for this plant. And it will start becoming soggy, so you don't want that to happen. Now on the other extreme is that you don't water it at all, which is what I did with this plant. Now, when you don't water this plant at all, the first stage you would see is that the leaves are drooping and they also become very soft and if this continues, then they'll eventually become brown and completely dry out. From this stage, there's no going back. You can't reverse this. So it's important that you keep an eye on your plant. If you see that the leaves have started drooping and they've become soft, then most likely your plant is thirsty. You need to add water to your plant. But this also happens if you're watering your plant too much. So an ideal frequency to water this plant is probably once in 14-15 days. Now for my snake plants, a couple of times I don't water them even in 20-30 days, it's still okay. But with this plant, I completely forgot to water this plant. So what went wrong for this plant is that it was kept in the bathroom we don't use so much. And I kept thinking that there's already so much humidity in the a bathroom and it should be enough because it's a succulent. Now that didn't help. Why? Because I realized later it's a plastic pot. The soil cannot absorb moisture from the air and within 50 to 60 days it turned into something like this. Now this is irreversible. I can't do anything about it. But if your plant is in this stage and in fact this applies for most indoor plants, if you see that the edges have started becoming brown there's most likely that there's infrequent watering. Sometimes probably water too much and sometimes you just don't water. Or it could be that you've completely stopped watering your plant. So in both these cases, what you should do is first follow a regular regime of watering. So for snake plant, needs watering every 14-15 days and shift it to a well-lit place. Now what is a well-lit place? This room is a well-lit place. It doesn't get direct sun and neither it is dark in the daytime. It doesn't need a tube light in the daytime. So this is what we will call a well-lit room. So for most of the indoor plants, shift them to a space like this and follow a regular watering regime. This will basically help your plant to gain immunity to fight any problem that it's facing. It a lot of times could be a disease, a fungal problem as well. This reminds me of something fun I read online. It said, remember to drink water and get some sun. Basically, humans are like plants just with complicated feelings. <laughs> Isn't that so? <laughs> anyway, so coming back to our plants. So for this plant, you might have seen sometimes the leaves have started drooping. If all the leaves are drooping, that means there's a watering problem. But only a leaf or two is drooping. This means there's a light problem. When the plant is starving for light, and is not able to carry on its normal photosynthesis process, some of the leaves start drooping. 
and in this case you should shift your plant to a well lit place you can keep this plant for a week or 10 days in this well lit place and then shift it back as well but just give it a good dose of light this will help the leaves to stand up erect again now the other problem i face with this plant is its propagation by the book you can take a cutting either an entire leaf or you can cut it into 3 inches piece and propagate it in water or in soil now i took a couple of cuttings about 2 weeks back and i completely failed with it i'd started them in water about 3 4 months back i did exactly the same but it was successful in water where i went wrong was that i forgot to change the water now if you are as forgetful as me or if you are lazy uh, also like me i would say then start them in soil start them in dry soil take the cutting put them in soil and do not water why because this would increase the chances of rot start watering only after 3 4 days by that time a callus would have formed when you propagate snake plant it can also take about 30 days a month for the roots to grow but that's completely okay one thing i would recommend for snake plant is start them in a pot do not start them in the ground because the thing is that once it's able to establish itself in the ground it'll grow wild it'll grow crazy you don't want that to happen because then it will stop or hinder the growth of other plants so it's a good idea to grow them in the pot now all these tips that i'm sharing with you apply for all the varieties of snake plant actually this term variety is very confusing sometimes people use it to refer to a subspecies which is just a variation of a species and sometimes people are referring to different species of the same genus uh you don't have to get into those details if it's confusing i'm really sorry but i wanted to point out that all the varieties of snake plant that you see in the market these tips will be applicable for them fun fact until 2015 scientists thought that this is a species of sensevaria but in 2015 they found out that this plant is actually a species of dracaena and it's no more a different species although commercially a lot of shops continue to use that name sensevaria but i just thought of letting you know that it's no more a sensevaria species it's actually a dracaena species and that's what i referred to early in this video as well so to summarize if you don't have any indoor plants and if you've been looking for that one easy to care for plant i would say invest in a snake plant it's pretty simple to care for and you can multiply it very easily in water and soil apart from the fact that it's very easy to grow and very simple to propagate it's also a great air purifier by which i mean that it can absorb contaminants from air contaminants such as formaldehyde benzene carbon monoxide from the air these contaminants mainly either come from indoor furniture paints and detergents so i feel that if you've been looking for that one perfect plant this is worth investing in i hope you like such individual plant videos and if you do then let me know down below in the comment section what are the other plants on which you would like me to make a video i'll soon be back until then take care Before we sign off for today's video, here is a quick update on all the veggies that I had grown 14 days back. So the lobia is ready, and since I started it in the seedling tray, I'm going to transplant them into a bigger pot. For the potato, nothing has come out. I have a feeling that they have decomposed. I think I'll have to start them again. This is how chili is doing. a one seed has sprouted and this i think is probably an invasive i didn't plant this and this is not a chili seed so probably i'll uproot this i hope more of the seeds sprout but even if they don't one seedling is good enough for one pot this is how mustard is doing so what i'll do is i'll let two three seedlings develop into a full plant and all others i'll harvest for eating in a salad 